Hello, good evening and welcome to the Business of Property. I'm your host, Cheryl Leong from Property Development Australia. So every week we interview superstar guests in the property development space that share their expertise, their deals and their stories to help empower, build and grow our community of property developers. So hello to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube land. I hope you're all doing well. If you are here with me today, I'd love for you to say hello in the comments below so I know that I'm not talking to the the ether. Um, for those of you who are celebrating Diwali, uh, happy Diwali to you. I, I believe it's today's the day of um, prayers to what my guest Subot is here. He says it's praying to the, um, the God of wealth. So I think we're going to be doing a bit of that today and every single day. But I do have a special guest. Um, so Bert, a good friend of mine, will be joining me for a bit of a chat around this topic that we are, um, our topic of choice today, which is around JV partners and investors and how to attract them. So, so Bert, come on down, join join me this evening. How are Hi you? Hi there. Hi, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Excellent. Thank you for e giving me this opportunity. No, I love love that you sort of said, hey, Cheryl, let's have a bit of a chat. And anyone here, this is, um, you know, it, it, it's not a structured um, call or anything. We wanted to be, have this conversation around joint venture partners and investors um, and sharing our top tips for being able to attract um, investors and be sort of a JV partner or invest magnet because you've been down this path, Subod, you know, you, you've you been an investor yourself and on the other side, you've had investors want um, to join and be a part of your your projects as well. Absolutely. So yeah, um, I'd love I'd love to to share your you know your journey and your experience and feel free to to shoot shoot back some questions to me as well. Absolutely, Cheryl. I mean, I'm looking forward to this and uh, happy to share my experiences, but also take some comments and tips and uh, you know questions from people around. And more importantly, I know you've also done uh jv deals uh, and yes. you know you are also an investor magnet in your own sense so i was looking forward to getting some <laughs> you know making it interactive and learning few more things from you I, I, absolutely this is all you know the, the part of of the pda community is around sharing our experiences and and, ho and hopefully that it inspires and motivates other people in the community to step out of their yeah comfort zone right we go into um a lot of us go into development and, you know, we go and educate ourselves. Lots of fantastic educators out there. Um, and, you know, this 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 topic of JV partners and investors often comes about when you sort of go, oops, one, I've don't, you know, I don't have enough cash on me or sure. two, I've, I don't have the equity or three, I just, you know, my money is being used elsewhere and I like to be able to partner up with people. Um, uh, so maybe share your experience as, as an investor with a developer to start off um, with. How yeah, was that experience? I mean, look, as, as I mentioned last time and when we chatted last time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. just like a lot of people around, I typically was a buy and hold investor and uh, been doing that for many, many years. And then I thought, started thinking, wow, there must be a better way of doing it. Uh, because if I can be a little bit blunt about it, we are all basically chasing the opportunity of making money uh, and, and obviously making the mo making money legitimately. And so what stops us from doing those multi-billion dollar deals or multi-million dollar deals? Uh, as I started reflecting on it, so we all chase the opportunity of making money. Then I started thinking, how can I do this? So what's the constraint? I very soon figured out that I can't do it on my own alone. So we got a couple of options, uh, you know, talk to friends and family or find some creative ways of synergizing people. And that's how this whole concept of a JV partner or a fellow investor magnet, because really you alone can do up to a certain level. I can do individually up to a certain level, but if we combine, then suddenly two plus two becomes four. And that's how this whole concept of JV, and we'll talk a bit more about different types of JVs, 
I can share with you my experiences. So really, from that background of being a buy and hold investor to graduating to, uh, I think it's a wrong word to call uh, using other people's money. I think the right way to put it, how can we synergize where people come together with different goals, but a common mm. purpose of creating wealth and yeah. you know, chasing the opportunity yeah. of making money for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I like that 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 concept of um, looking at it more so it's it's synergizing because one of the things that um, I of you know I often read and I see people ask and they ask of me is like how do I find a JV partner? And I think the important things that I've I've experienced and noted is is to understand and be aware of what you bring to the table. Absolutely. What are the Absolutely. skills? the skills and the knowledge and the financial input that you bring to the table. So, Absolutely. and then what what someone else in terms of skill, knowledge and financial capacity, how yeah. they are sort of there to plug in and, and complement what you Absolutely. do or don't do. Because I think it, it's the same concept of you know, too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the broth. Like if both of you, um, you know, if both partners decide that they want to be the project manager and there's no clear roles and responsibilities, then, you know, you run the risk of potentially having power struggles. Uh, you know, Cheryl, I, I'll put it other way. I mean, you are we are anyhow talking the same thing, but... Yeah. Even before you talk about how, we should talk about why. Mm. Why do you need a joint venture partner? Mm. You know, if you understand that, like, for example, if I can share with you my experience, so I had a lot of network and a lot of friends and maybe a 10 years or 12 years of experience in property and buy and hold, right? So when I put that into a bucket, then I start thinking, why do I need to do a change? Because when I went down to the route of development, I started understanding and we wanted to do a kind of luxury development, boutique work. So moment you talk of that in a Sydney market, that is sort of four to five million dollar project. Now, when you're talking such a big pile of money, obviously, then that is where your purpose comes in. That why do I need to do a JV? Because I don't have enough money with me as a person. So I need to have a group of people around me who can either bring, you know, pile load of cash or bring talent, which I don't have. For example, it could be building skills. It could be design and architectural skills. So once you understand that particular aspect, then mm. you start thinking of who do I now need to go and talk? Mm. For example, in my case, I need to go and talk to people who have got adequate cash, who are perhaps time poor or I need to go and talk to good builders who know how to do a luxury build, or I need to go and talk to town planners and architects. So you see, I'm already starting to think in my mind, who are the potential JV partners? So why do I need it? And then comes the how. Mm. So what yeah. can I offer to them? And, and what is exactly what you were trying to say that what do I offer? Why should they even talk to me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then I, I I like the way that you're thinking there, you know, why am I needing it? Um, and is that going to be beneficial to what I'm doing as well? I have to say the one of the stumbling points that I recognize now looking back at, at my property journey was thinking I needed to go and do it all on my own to begin with. And that took me a long time to realize that that was a very slow way of doing things. Absolutely. That I was depending purely on my own savings and serviceability and the equity in my property. And it was to a certain extent um, a very limiting mindset when yeah. I just thought, oh, this is, this is the situation I'm in. I don't know what the solution is. I'm just going to wait until I, it gets better. 
and I'd love to ask the the audience. You know, do, uh, you know, do you feel? Do you ever feel in that way that you sort of go, I only can do so much. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough serviceability. I don't have enough. And and you know, I realized as I educated myself and as I saw people doing deals, and I and I wondered to myself exactly what you're talking about. So surrounding yourself with other people, because one of the things I used to think was. As a developer, I got to start off with duplexes to begin with, get some e equity, more capital, get to bigger, and then it sort of grows and grows. And then I came across people doing subdivisions of five acre lots, and they're subdividing to 40 lots. And I'm like, are these like multi millionaires? And then they, and then the guy said to me, no, we've just a few of us, my friends and I, you know, a few colleagues that are in the property space have come together. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is something. And and they don't require serviceability? No, it's on the merit of the project. And that's when it really opened my eyes to, wow, okay, development is another kettle of fish where um, it's 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 about bringing solutions together and people together to make things happen. Absolutely, absolutely, and, Michelle. If I can just add to that, uh, you know, when we were in business consulting, uh, it it's not about what you know, but it's about who do you know who knows a solution. Mm. Like if if you tell me I want to make a high rise you know, apartment, for example, as a development. Honestly, I would not even have a clue about it now. So if I were to try and achieve that as a goal, not that I want to do it at this stage in my journey, then I immediately I'm constrained because I don't know how to how to scope an apartment, look for a site, et cetera, et cetera. Then I need to know people who know how, to, how they do that. So it comes back to the JV, you know, we all get constrained. We all have got mind constraints because as Subodh as a person, at max, I can do a duplex or maybe three townhouses or four townhouses. Now, suddenly, if I'm thinking of 10 townhouses or, you know, 15 townhouses or subdivision lots, then I need to slowly find out people who know that game and then mm -hmm. offer them something in return as a JV partner or as investors or whatever. So I think a lot of, and I'm, 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 I must, I must honestly say that I'm new to this whole thing, you know, three, four years, but whatever I see around, there are a lot of people who are still thinking it's about me and what can I do? Mm. But if people start thinking, what can we do? Mm. It brings in synergy. It mm. brings in complementary skills. It brings in, you know, two plus two becomes 22, for example. Yes. And then it brings yeah. in a bigger volume. And that's mm. how the JV conversation needs to be looked at. That, uh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I'd say also a lot of developers start off doing development on a part time basis and yeah. will have full time jobs as well. So understanding that, particularly when time is money, when it comes to projects, you know, how much time do you have, not not including the skill and knowledge of actually running a project, how much time do you have to actually speak to consultants, go to site, assess, assess, um, assess drawings or reports? So, you know, looking at that and going, okay, am I better off being the money partner in a project? Or am I going to be the one that's actually doing the project management? Or sure. it's a combination sure. combination of both. So what you talk about in terms of those synergies is going, you know, having that awareness. So if whoever's listening at the moment, like if I hear a lot of people wanting to get into development and the reality is that development also includes that, that if you're going to run a project by yourself, knowing, how to properly project manage a development certainly project so, so let's take specific example yeah uh, we are already about 15 minutes into the conversation uh, so if, if people go and look at 
I mean, I'm going to just put myself on the block, sort of, just to highlight uh, our journey and what can be done. So it was a good 10 years before I even dreamt of doing this full time. Mm. So it was hard yard yards. And I won't dwell into that side of the story because it's already out there. We shared with it. But after that 10 years of solid buy and hold investing and creating a large network, I had reasonable amount of equity to start our first project, so to say, where we were actually money partners with a good developer. And mm. even at that stage, we were passively learning and absorbing the skills of the game. Once we got success in that project, as you know, we did a luxury build and we can talk about that in some other time, but we did actually sort of a joint venture where we gave a pile of cash and the builders brought in all the other skills and we ran a project and we did a luxury flip wherein as a team, we walked away with nearly $1.5 million in 18 mm. months. Mm. So then the penny dropped in my mind that if this, it's a massive amount of money, perhaps we were lucky, but if this is the kind of money it's worth doing full time. So I actually mm. stopped my other activities and started focusing on this full time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is a process of doing it. I would not recommend somebody doing development day one, but mm -hmm. if you have enough momentum and network and support and foundation, it could be two years, five years, 10 years, whatever is your journey. Mm -hmm. A time will come when you can actually quit your full-time job. In my case, actually, I did a pivot from a business. I had a business for 10 years, which I still have, but I pivoted out from it because I could see that there's enough money to be made and more. And that's how we got into this. And then the next step comes, all right, so what is it that we want to do? So in our case, everybody will have different journey and different goals. In our case, it was luxury build, big projects, and relatively quickly, given my age and gray hairs. So, <laughs> so therefore, uh, you know, the JV that we are talking about, and, and I'm happy to talk high level, is, is really a $7 billion TDC in Sydney. Mm. So we decided to work in Sydney, large project, you know, it's duplex plus two luxury builds and a mm. subdivision also to add to it. Now, this kind of complex projects just cannot be done by one person standing up and doing it. It has to be a teamwork. You got to have money. You got to have skills. You got to have the right team, you know, plans and permits and all the professionals and a project manager and a builder because our build itself is nearly 2.5 million dollars plus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you see mm -hmm. now i'm not saying everybody needs to do be that but you could have some other goals so it starts yeah. by laying a foundation being clear of where you want to go next giving it adequate focus and time and then finding jv partners and how did you go about finding JV, JV partners, whether it's money, to, you know, money partners or, or people that were going to bring in the expertise and skill? Uh, it's a good question. And this is the funny part of it. When you are operating, like we were operating on the luxury pit. So when you are doing a particular type of project, the people that you attract are also at that level. Hmm. So to tell you specifically, uh, last year, October, so we are talking now 21. So this is 1920 October, a good one year back. A fellow JV partner who is now our joint venture partner actually approached us and said, hey, can I have a look at your luxury build? And I said, yeah, come over. And we had a conversation and he said, you know what? I also got a project. Would you like to see my project? And I very distinctly remember on 29th of October last year, that was the first time I went and saw the site, which today we have done a JV with. Mm. So you see, you tend to attract people uh, because I am sure he would have thought at that time, geez, this guy is doing a $5 million project and it's a luxury build. So he's got certain capacity in terms of sophistication, in terms of investment. So that's, the, that's how I stumbled. And it's nearly now about 12 to 14 months of hard engagement when we have actually started yeah. the JV journey. So that's an yeah. answer to you that, you know, like attracts like. Mm. 
Mm. And that's how we stumbled on this particular. Because we were clear in our mind, we wanted to do a big build in Sydney, which can be like a flagship project. Yeah, absolutely. How much of the networking has been um, a contribution to the partners that you have, both net, you know, money, money partners, and again, skills and knowledge? Yeah, I mean. I would love to love for you also to share your experience. But in our case, what happened was so, so we suddenly had this opportunity and we really didn't have any money at that time because all of our money was focused and was all invested in the build that we were doing. Mm. But the engagement started there. So once the engagement started, I started thinking, what is it? So I knew what I wanted, correct? Then the question came about, how do I go about it? So I started talking to the partner, started understanding what his pain points were. Why was he even looking at engaging with me? Hmm. And I found out that his, you know, his requirement was that he had got, you know, other things that he wanted to focus on in his life. And he wanted somebody to bring in uh, a bit of money and a skill and a long-term commitment to his project. That was still his project. That was not our project. So you see, it was a process of, I remember from October to nearly March, which is about five months, it just took me time to figure out why is he even talking to me? So, so the first phase was all about trying to understand why, wh wh what is he looking from me? Mm. And what can I offer to him? And mm. what am I expecting in return? So do you feel that it was during that time it was him assessing sort of your, you know, I guess credibility, reliability, expertise and knowledge? What, what, why? I'd say almost like a dating period. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. A project is nothing but a short-term marriage, I guess, for 18 yeah. to 24 months, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. So so my initial conversation with, with him was, what help do you want? Hmm. Uh, what is it that you are looking from me? So he told me, I need, I need you to, you know, get some cash. Hmm. Uh, so I said, all right, then let me see if I can have a go at that. And then from there, I started talking to a few close friends because it being a, you know, massive multi-million dollar of capital raising or, you know, money that we, we wanted to structure. So we already had a strong business mentor for our business. We had a very good chartered accountant. And over a period of time, I actually found a couple of good property lawyers because when you want to put a deal together, you've got to be sure that you are 100% compliant, 100% transparent. So while I was talking to him to find out what am, what can I offer to him, I was also trying to increase my own bandwidth to deliver on those things. Mm. Mm. So that that's how, so he absolutely, it was absolutely a process of him sussing me out in terms of my credibility, reliability, ability to deliver and believe me, in the initial stages, as I told you, our money was committed somewhere else. So we didn't even have the money. But as the credibility went on increasing, as our engagement went on increasing, we actually became good friends. Hmm. And then we started talking business, which was, yeah. suppose, let's say from October to March, it was a process of becoming good friends and understanding what can I offer to him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I've got a question here. How many projects have you run solo versus with a partner? Maybe start with start with you first and then I can answer that. Uh, good question. I mean, look, it's been a journey, honestly. And in terms of buy and hold, uh, you know, uh, we've done a few projects, we've done a few granny flats, home extensions, renovations. So at the top of my mind, about six to seven small and medium sized projects before we did the big build and before now we have set up five more projects so we've accelerated so it's been a very slow start for a good 10 years before we could uh, you know take the jump and uh, doing it full time now it gives me a bit more confidence and look i'm not saying that i know it all i'm sure out there people would have done things differently 
Uh, yeah, so solo projects, you can say five to seven over a period of 10 years, uh, you know, burned houses, uh, restructure, structure, uh, you know, structural renovations, granny flats, home extensions, before you get on to full blown build. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I sim similarly, uh, sort of like the renovations, um, you know, single builds, uh, that sort of thing where the extensions we've done on our own um, as well. And however, because I still have another business as well, um, I have business, I have children, and then there's projects as well. I personally prefer to do it with business partners, whether it's monetary or generally, uh, for me, I like to have a business partner that is strong in project management. So as a strong sure. project manager, because I I know where my skills and weaknesses are. So I'm good with bringing projects, you know, identifying projects, the feasibility, the financials, the legal side of things. I bring that, I can bring that together, the negotiation side of things. And I like to then have, pro, you know, someone who is experienced and knowledgeable in that project management space to actually run projects well that they can cash flow, they're looking at, you know, and they're, they're, you know, I find great project managers are like a dog to a bone where <laughs> you tell them a deadline. If you exceed that deadline, they come down hard on you like a ton of bricks going, you said Wednesday, why not Wednesday? And that for me, you know, is, is really important, particularly when you've got projects and deadlines that you've got to keep on top of and costs, you know, every single day, it costs more money. If it's projects delayed, it costs you money. And so any of my development projects now, I prefer to actually run with partners because Great. for one, I like being able to spread sort of the, the knowledge around and the expertise. Um, and two, because I'm just a social person, I like to do things with other people. Absolutely. I personally like, and, and leveraging, like leveraging other people's um, experience and knowledge and sort of going well I can achieve more with other people than doing things by myself exactly like you said absolutely and look there is a lot of talent and a lot of experience in our group and uh, mm. people I could you know I know Susie was you know peeping in and hi Susie how are you going so she was uh, you know again very talented person out there so really one person can't do everything one person does not even know everything Mm. Uh, for example, now we have started looking at the value chain. Even if you go back to this JV example, the purpose why we did the JV was because this particular partner had actually worked on that site for a good three and a half years. Mm. So he's acquired the site, it put plans and permits together. There were multiple, multiple, you know, back and forth with the council, with all the neighbors raising tremendous amount of objections. And he has crossed all that hurdles hmm. and he has got an approval for subdivision and a further build of, you know, a couple of duplexes and two luxury homes. So you see, that is all the wealth of knowledge and skill and ability that he is bringing onto the table. Hmm. And there is no way that, you know, at this stage of my journey, I could say that I can do all of this. So, so you're right that, you know, how you thought about complementary skills, that you got certain skills and what are the skills that you need complementary on? And that is what you need to look for to make a successful journey. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear from, um, hi, Susie, how are you doing? And you, hi, you know, Su Susie, you, you've had quite a bit of experience with joint ventures as well. I mean, you've got a business partner, if I'm not wrong, one or two. Um, and and money partners, I'd love for you to share your experience with with the community. You know how how do you go around attracting JV partners and investors? So maybe maybe sharing a few tips, and I can share sort of my my tips and and yourself as well, Subro. How yeah. how else do you go about, especially as um, someone who is I guess, fairly new to the development space, all right? Because I get a lot of questions from from fairly new developers going, um, I don't have social, you know, I don't do a lot of social media. Um, how can I attract investors? Um, 
into my project. Um, what would be your top tips for for them? Uh, well, somebody did ask a question: How many projects you did in the past? So I think that question itself is questioning credibility, right? Mm. So I think first thing you need to look at is: Can you really stand up there and be credible? Now, how mm. do I build my credibility? So we straight away sort of since last three years, I have been constantly learning. We have invested in a business coach, as I told you. So that is one credibility. Second is you've got a good chartered accountant. You know, he's got multiple, multiple properties. He himself runs about seven to eight projects. So that is another way of building credibility. Third way could be that you have good property lawyers. So you see, it's about building a team. Mm. And then on your own, committing to your, a uh, lot of people are not committed to what they want. It's not been easy to leave a successful IT career or a business consulting career and do something different. Yeah. But again, when you, when you go out to people and say, I do this full time, I've got mm. my own money that is invested in my projects. Mm. I've got a business coach. I've got a chartered accountant. I've got a property lawyer. So your money, if it is being invested with us, is going to be safe, it's going to be secured. And I don't have hesitation in saying that we will engage with best of the people to see that the project is delivered. Mm. I mean, so you see, it you've got to be realistic about what you're trying to achieve and be honest about it. But if you go around thinking that I know everything and you know I'll keep things I do things in a way which is not transparent and doesn't build over a period of time. It it may not it may not succeed. It might succeed mm. for one or two projects, but very soon the community is very small and people would come to know. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so let leveraging your team, like putting you know we we hear this often, like putting together your team of experts. At the end of the day, we all don't know everything all on our own. But having these people who are from a legal perspective, from an accounting perspective, to be able to have look through your feasibilities. Um, okay. and, and so surrounding yourself with your super team helps not only build your, your knowledge base, it builds your level of credibility to be able to say, hey, you know, I might be fairly new to this, but I've got mentors that are able to guide me, okay. guide me through guide me through it and if you're willing to come on you know obviously you're willing to to join with me we're going to be transparent about this we're going to do this together absolutely i mean we don't hesitate in engaging with an acquisition strategist yes and we pay big dollars for that we don't hesitate mm -hmm. in paying money to do a proper you know uh, feasibility we have tools with us so we do that but we also don't hesitate in getting a land subdivision consultant to take proper views from yes. him even before we acquire a property. Yeah. You introduced me to Richie Muir and a big shout to him out here. Again, very good professional. So our joint venture agreements are 50 pages. So you see, we don't hesitate again in paying all that money. Now, mm -hmm. is it going to give returns on the first project? Perhaps not. But over a period of time, money you know that is the credibility that we will build when we show demonstrate to people that we have got strong agreements proper joint ventures and you know so so really in the first jv you will be surprised we've actually got three lawyers guiding us so you see trying to do things which are long term and transparent helps mm. you Mm. Uh, and I'm mm. sure you'd also mm. must have done that. You were talking about the Camry project, you know, to me and how you mm. went about that. You got a good project manager. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, for, for say one of our projects now, and um, that's our Camry project. And, and we've got a, an excellent, excellent development manager. Who's one of our partners as well in the project. I mean, he's, he's got, I don't know, over 30 years experience in, in construction management and building and all, you know, um, there are things that bec um, in the project that if it was 
left to me that I wouldn't have picked up. I wouldn't have been able to value engineer uh, the project. I wouldn't have been able to to work out the best materials um, uh, in terms of the the underground parking or be able to make a lot of us, uh, you know, um, all these all these things that come with experience, right? Absolutely. That you can, you know, you can learn things when you're at university. You can learn things when you're you're doing a property development course. The practical, you know, the theoretical side of things, but there's nothing that beats experience. Absolutely. And so, when when you are, you know, at the end of the day, development, yes, it is a process. There's so much about the um, uh, the technical side of actually delivering projects that I'm more than happy, like I said, to be able to pay someone to do it mm-hmm. or partner with someone who knows what they're doing and yeah. and and is able to sort of make sure that they're identifying the problems before they arise okay. and also knows how to how to deal to deal with it. Absolutely. I mean, I'll share with you another example. Uh, let's say if you look at the value chain of development, one of the big risk and one of the big uh, you know chunk of work is the build. Mm. Yeah. And in our first project, we are not builders. We don't have building qualifications. We don't have the licenses, blah, blah. So we deliberately actually got a builder who is our mentor. Mm. Now, again, being honest, we are not going to build all of our projects because this particular gentleman may not have the capacity to do a luxury build. We are honest about it. We'll try to get the right person for the right work. But for us to start, you know, developing more depth into our service offering, we've actually got a mentor who's got 19 years of build experience. Mm. And he's sort of semi-retired and, you know, wants to take a step back. So we have actually started using him for one of our projects. On top of that, we have actually got a project manager managing that project. Plus, we are actually using a software. I had actually posted it in the community about some good softwares out there. So we have actually invested in a software. So so you see, we are also constantly learning and strengthening our own knowledge base so that we can capture the value chain. And that's how we can, you know, earn more money, make more money for us and others. It's like a constant process like that. Um, So what I want to talk about another topic around social media and, and your thoughts around using social media and getting comfortable with social media in terms of building, at the end of the day, almost like a personal brand right how yeah. how how do you feel how do you feel about that and i like and i'll share with you my my thoughts and, and experience as well uh, you are a champion in it Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> hardly, hardly. Look, Still uh, no you're good at it uh, look um, my view is a bit old school uh, because the way i look at it uh, we don't need too many people Mm. Uh, for us, it's, I mean, the way I'm looking at it right now, we're in a small circle of friends and family slash investors uh, because we take high, you know, we take substantial investment. So mm. actually, I'm the other way around. I do not want to go out and talk too many things. Uh, I'm happy to share knowledge and help people, but I'm not in that school of thought who goes out. And I, I, I like what you do with all due respect, but I'm, I would not spend time in going on to Facebook and, you know, running WhatsApp groups and channels. For me, it is more about sitting with people, maybe 10 or 15 of them over a period of time and showing them what we do Mm. and working with them in a close knit circle and Mm. delivering projects. Mm. So for me, Mm. it would be more of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, that's my way. Uh, mm. Now, on the go, yes, we do need a bit of website and demonstrate what projects we have done. Mm. Uh, but we are a very close-knit uh, group and mm. we want to keep it that way. Uh, yeah. As far as helping others is concerned, that's not an issue. That that can be done. Yeah, yeah. And and would you say with your, your network, because you've come from a, 
um, a business background and you're you're an entrepreneur in your own own rights, right? Your network would be, um, and your investors would be from your network of business associates and and I said, like you said, friends and family already. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, initially. Yeah, and and absolutely, if you've got, um, if I find that if you've got that core group of people that that you can that are of similar values and you can work with um you know you don't need a you don't need you know a hundred investors or anything it's about going okay we can pull together um on on the flip side is you've got a lot of people who are coming from uh say might be fairly young in this in the property space and and not and they haven't built up a network of of say friends who are probably of this similar mindset it's them looking at ways now to be able to market yourself to go how you know creating that level of credibility and personal brand again yeah and look my view is market is the wrong word to use it's mm -hmm. all about what value are you adding and to yes yeah because really there is nothing to market if you are doing a good job, doing a, as best as you can, taking mm. professionals along with you. Yes. Uh, best is to demonstrate. And the good thing about projects is you can actually demonstrate what you are doing. Yes. Because you can see a build coming up from the ground. And there is no shortcut to this whole thing. I mean, because if you are an educator, then you can go out there and talk about educating people. Mm. But if you are really doing projects, then you need to be clear about the project feasibility, ROIs, progress, return on investment, how is it going? I think that's how we approach our value proposition. Mm. So it's, yeah, happy to share, happy for people to come and have a look, uh, you know, at a high level, share the numbers, share the contacts, but would they... If somebody tells me I want to be part of your project, would I jump up on it? Perhaps no. Because mm. over a period of time, yes. So there is nothing to market in that sense. Mm. For young people, people who are new, I think there are no shortcuts to this. You've got to basically do a few projects on your own. Yeah. Uh, you know, go through the yards. Uh, I mean, that's my way of looking at it. But I'm sure there are people out there who, who have got a great, uh, you know, um, a pitch or a marketing, uh, you know, uh, website or, or initiatives, which mm. which can demonstrate value proposition, mm. and and they might be able to do things differently. Mm. That's why I said that I'm a bit old school in terms of social media marketing. <laughs> and that's uh, absolutely, and that's that's absolutely okay. It, it's going well. There are different ways that that we are. You know, the the whole point of this conversation is around going. You know the different ways to be able to attract um, and bring people together. Uh, I, I agree a hundred percent around providing value, providing value in some way or some form. It is around building that 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 rapport and that credibility and connection with you because people are going. This is someone. Even when you're learning, even when you're learning and and, and sharing your journey. People do want to be part of that, and I've seen quite a few people in our community who are like, you know, this is this is our first, um, uh, you know, this is our first project, and we, um, you know, these are the challenges that we've had, or these are the wins that we're having, and then I see then in the next project when they're sort of sharing that, people are people are reaching out to these people. And and sending you know um, direct messages to go hey you know when you have another project I'd love to I'd love to joint venture with you so I think that that when you have to a certain extent um, if you don't have an existing network to to work with it's around looking at other ways that you can reach out to people that can that can come together and whether it's within you know within this community contributing and providing value in some ways even commenting on on post right 
if you yeah. you comment on posts and you are able to to look like you're contributing in some way people build a level of 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 trust in you certainly certainly in some way yeah i mean you got to provide value to others as we're talking about so even as jv partners or you know investor magnet is also a very heavy word but <laughs> you know providing value to people where you know you can safely take their money invest it and turn it around uh, yeah. you got to find from which angle are you coming in are you coming in from deal structuring deal setup or are you coming in from plans and permits perspective great site great due diligence you got the skills to put good plans and permits together which can optimize a site or are you coming in from the build perspective where you can do a build in a cost effective timely manner mm. as a mm. project manager or are you actually a builder who can who, who can you know sort of deliver a project so you see there are different components to the whole value chain of development and generally a project let's say takes 12 to 14 months so therefore unless you do those three four projects it's very hard to build a credibility in terms of what have you actually done mm. so so for us also it's a journey it, it's just a, it's not that we do everything but once you do that then automatically there are people who are you know interested in having conversations with you yes. you've got to also choose the right partners because there might be people who may have a lot of let's say money to invest but their expectations might be high mm. so you've got to find out whether can you meet those expectations in terms of timelines of the money that you are taking or in terms of the return that you are you know committing to them or you know what is it that you are offering and can you actually deliver on those yeah i think those are some of the things how you you know uh, again you need to think through absolutely well i love love to put it out to the community there the, those of you that are, are listening and with us today what's been your experience with joint ventures or investors or if you're looking to be a joint venture or an investor in a project what are some of your your questions and i love to be able to have a have a chat to um to support have a chat to the 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 audience here because at the end of the day it's you know um one of the things I've, I've, and I've seen work quite well. I know you're a little bit, I you know, so what you said, old school. In saying that, um, you know, I have seen the power of people posting up videos of updates on projects. And so if, if this is anything will be my, my number one um, hack to be able to create a level of credibility and, um, uh and, and personal brand is start to feel comfortable if you're in your development journey and starting to start looking at joint ventures or investors get comfortable with your camera right, this is probably one of my first first things it's not about how many social media posts you put out it's not about saying you know putting motivational quotes is start to have people see the real side of you and your projects and so the next time that you're out on at your site, take out your phone and share with people about your project journey and what it is that you're doing and a little bit about the project. At the end of the day, people are, yeah, are, are looking to be able to learn and be educated and be inspired. Yeah. So if you can inspire people in some way or form to see, see to say that this is possible, and if there's a part of them that says, I don't have the time or the knowledge or the money to, you know, or the money to do it, either one of those three or a combination, and they look to you to say, this person's doing it, he or she's doing it, there's more likely that they're going to look at you and want to be connected with you in some way and potentially want to, you know, do some sort of a partnership type thing down the line. Absolutely. In fact, Cheryl, if you start by giving, you will start getting Yes. So if you start by giving to people, it could be your project, it could be your knowledge, it could be you know, some referral or somebody needs a good, like today morning, someone called me from Brisbane. He connected me via, I think, our community and he's doing 
five townhouses in Tawumba. Mm. So I spend a good half an hour, 45 minutes with him, just sharing with him what we do and and give him rich in yours contact and you know chartered accountants contact. So just giving it without expecting. And mm. and he and he now then he started telling me he's got an investment property in Blacktown in Sydney. So next time he's going to be in Sydney, he'll be happy to catch me for a cup of coffee. So you see, when you start giving, you start getting. But if you yes. start approaching from getting perspective, how can I sign up this investor as soon as possible? Mm. Then your whole mm. mindset is trying to sell mm. or trying to, you know, get something. But if you start by saying, happy to share what we have, happy to show you in a yes. safe way. And if if you want to be part of it, so be it. We'll talk about it separately. I mm. think if you approach it from that way, I think uh, it might be more better. Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. I think that's a really, really good point there. Um, so, Bo, I've, I've really appreciated having a chat to you, and I think there's some really, really good points there. You've you shared from your experiences. I've shared a little bit about how you know we've we've had. Um, partnerships, whether I'm looking for partnerships or people looking for partnerships with us. Again, whatever it is that you're doing and wherever you are in your development journey, um, I, I, it it is the synergies. If, if there's anything to take away, it's the synergy, finding people who are, you know, the synergies between your skills and your knowledge and your financial input. Um, I love that the that we're it, we're looking at the value that you can bring to to people. And, and the fact is that, you know, there's more than enough to go around. It's about giving and yeah. giving and being able to share as well. Yeah. And I think yeah. if you've got that abundance mindset, and, and this is the other part about sharing your journey. It's like if you're sharing the challenges and the wins along the way, it's not about, oh, you know, there'll be less there'll be less sites for me because other property developers will be doing it. No, in fact, it's saying, hey, I'm more than happy to share because I know that, you know, if this inspires you, then you're going to be wanting to do a project that makes a difference to your to your life. So I really I really like the messages that have come out of this Absolutely. conversation. And, and, and one more last thing is, if something is worth doing, it's worth doing well. So mm. committing to it, like, you know, everybody may not be able to do it but trying to do it full time or devoting enough time to it because if you're doing it at a particular level you've got to commit to something i think yes. that itself brings in a lot of momentum because yes like when i was in it you know i used to run my it business but now that i'm doing real estate development and still starting the journey i virtually spend eight hours of my time only in this space so what I can do in one year, perhaps other people can do in two years. Mm. Because, you know, the amount of time that I spend in that space, because I'm doing it with focus, the yes. momentum is more rather than trying to run an IT business and trying to do developments on the side. Mm. It's a sheer opportunity that you get because whole day, tomorrow morning, I get up and either talk to a town planner or talk to a PCA or talk to a builder or look at a good site or set up mm. a feasibility. So when you keep doing it, your opportunity cost, you know, your opportunity of success goes up. Yeah. I think so yeah. all those things, but but I yeah, think we that, covered it well. That's uh, a really good point. There are a few aspects to JV that I would love to hear from the community also. Uh, mm. There are JVs that are with money partners. There are JVs with land owners. There are JVs with uh, builders and developers. So I think there are different aspects to this Mm. big word called joint venture it yes. would be worth exploring how other people have structured things yeah i think that the point that um again comes up often is around joint ventures with with landowners so you know those that those of you that have have had experience with that um feel free to comment even even after after this is is finished you can watch if you're watching the replay pop the comments below um tag either Sabod or myself or anyone else um you know how have you structured jvs with landowners um how have you structured jvs with with other investors with serviceability partners or 
if you're the equity partner. So I think the more that we're able to to share our experiences in this regard, people are the rest of us in the community are learning in some way or form. You know, Absolutely. and we're 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 able to support each other on this on this big journey, which you know a lot of us go into because we want to create a level of freedom. Absolutely. There's a big word out there that together we can make better and conquer yes. more. Yeah, love it. Love it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, All Sabor, right. I know you're going to have a busy, busy week with a lot of celebrations. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me tonight. It's an absolute pleasure. pleasure. And um, and everyone that's, that's here with us and has been listening, uh, I appreciate you and your time as well. Again, please feel free to share with us um, your own experiences with, with JVs and, and investors. If you have enjoyed tonight's session and if you'd like to listen to any of our previous Business of Property sessions, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube page um, and also um, just share it. Share it with other people. Invite other people to the Property Development Australia Facebook group. Um, it's an amazing community. I'm very, very proud to be a part of it and I hope it brings lots of value to you and your journey as well. So until next time, take care, keep safe. And I'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.